Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint & Sip, and this is Paint & Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Paris in winter and I'm sipping on some raspberry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, purple violet, green oxide, Mars black, burnt umber, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a half inch wide bright brush. It's a number six bright synthetic brush. And I have a number three round synthetic brush. I refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my medium brush to mix a custom color that we'll be using for the background. So I really want this to look like a super snowstorm that is just, you know, a cool wintry air. So I'm gonna go for a very pale lavender type of color. So I have pre-mixed my color so you can see where I'm headed. This is the color I'm aiming for. It's very close to a light gray with a touch of purple in it. So how I got to it was mostly white and then I used just a teeny touch of purple, a teeny touch of brown, and a teeny touch of black. So I made myself a kind of a light gray with the black, white, and brown and then I added a tiny bit of purple to it in order to give it this kind of light lavender type of color. So once you've got the um, desired color that you want. And of course yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. Once you've got the color we're just going to paint the entire canvas with that custom color. So I've got my large bristle brush. I'm going to be using a left to right brush stroke. You could certainly use any type of brush stroke that you want because we're using a color that has good opacity in it which means you can't really see through it too much. And because you can't see through it the brush stroke will not be as evident by the time it dries. So if you're working with um, really thin paint, you might be able to see some of that um, lighter color from the canvas underneath. But because, again, we've got some good opacity, which means there's a lot of white inside the paint mixture, that helps to cover that canvas, um, the, the visual look of the canvas itself. So I just kind of go around the edges making sure I cover those and then I'm using predominantly a left to right brush stroke in order to get the entire canvas covered. You could certainly use a larger brush, you could do multiple coats if you wanted to, but what I like to do is get the paint on here and then you'll see me 
kind of do these big, large, sweeping brush strokes back and forth in order to make sure that my paint is nice and level throughout the whole canvas, which will allow me to not have lumps and bumps throughout the, um, throughout the surface of the canvas as I'm going through my painting process. So it's all on there now, and then I just kind of quickly go back and forth left to right. A lot of times the paint is self-leveling as it dries. It will lay flatter to the canvas, but if you're using a heavier bodied can, uh, a heavier bodied paint, you may want to do this exercise where you go back and forth so you have it nice and level. And then we're going to be using our pencil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your pencil, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our Eiffel Tower. I'm gonna to be using my pencil. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is one of those times where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to guide you through a series of markers and we're going to connect those markers, kind of like connect the dots, <laughs> but in a much more cool way. I'm going to start with a horizon line of sorts down at the bottom and then I'll guide you through the structure of the tower. We're just going for a nice basic outline. We'll be putting all the fun details on later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down in the bottom left hand side of my canvas. I'm going to come up about two and a half to three inches, give myself a little bit of a marker, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the right side, but to know that you get it kind of the same height, you can use something as simple as your brush as a measuring tool, and you can see how high you did it on one side, and then come to the other side and give yourself a marker at about the same height. I'm going to connect these two with just a, a long kind of sketcherly type of line. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. We are just giving ourselves kind of a barrier to put the feet of the tower on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself the center of my canvas, left to right, top to bottom. For me, that's right about here. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to come to the right about two inches and down maybe about a quarter of an inch. Give myself a marker in through here. This is going to be the top of the arch um, underneath the tower. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come directly below here and I'm going to go to the right about five, five and a half inches or about two and a half inches from the edge of my canvas, make myself a marker. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on the left side. So this marker is if this is the center of my canvas left to right, I am maybe about two and a half, three inches to the, well, one, about a little over two inches, maybe about two and a half inches to the left of that marker. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself another marker down here that's gonna be almost halfway between here and here. So somewhere right about here. What I'm now gonna do is I'm going to connect here to here and here to here. This is the arch underneath the tower. So I'm gonna just take this and give it a curved line like this, and then a curved line like this. All right, and through there. So that's gonna give me the arch underneath. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to the, back to the center of my tower in, or my arch in through here. And I'm gonna go up, I would say about three or almost halfway between here and the top of my canvas. So right about in through here. So maybe about three and a half, four inches in through here because if my canvas is uh, 16 inches, this would be eight. So yeah, about four inches above here. Give myself a little bit of a marker. I'm gonna go straight up from that to the top of my canvas. So somewhere in through here. I'm gonna go to the left of that, maybe about three quarters of an inch and to the right about three quarters of an inch. This I'm going to be making myself a, the, a triangular type of shape, but my point of my triangle is off my canvas. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna from here, I'm gonna come out about an inch and a half to two inches right here. This is gonna be my corner and same thing over on the left hand side. I'm gonna connect here to here with a straight a horizontal line. And then I'm gonna connect here to here with a diagonal line and then here to here with a diagonal line. 
So that's going to give us that inside kind of um, appearance. And again, doesn't have to be super perfect. We're going to have a lot of snow falling in our scene. So if these lines aren't perfect, that's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right of here and the left of here to give myself the outside edges of my um, of my tower. So I'm going to go to the right of this about an inch and a half to two inches and then the same thing over on this side. So somewhere in through here will give me that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down. I think this should probably be maybe a little bit over to the right, just a smudge. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down on this right hand side, come up from here. I would say about halfway between here and here. So somewhere about here is maybe a little bit higher is where I'm having this right leg kind of come off the canvas. The exterior side of the tower kind of comes down like this and then just bumps out a little bit at that bottom edge. So when I come down here, I'm going to kind of come down um, almost in a straight diagonal and then I'll give it a slightly rounded type of edge as it's coming down towards that bottom part of the leg. So I'm going to take it like this and I'm going to come down like this and you'll see this better on the other side when we see more of the other leg, something like that. This would kind of come out and curve down like that and you'll see on this side. So I'm going to connect this marker to down here. So you just kind of got warmed up over there. <laughs> now we're going to do this on this side where we're going to kind of come almost straight diagonal in through about here and then it's going to kind of curve out just a little bit. So I'm going to come down in through here and again doesn't have to be super straight and then just a little bit of an arc in through there. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is put there's a like a, a layer of a um, lookout tower kind of area in this in this um, section of the tower. So I'm going to come straight over from here and then give myself a horizontal line that's about an inch wide and then just come straight down from that until it meets the tower. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So just kind of come straight out over here about an inch and then just bring this straight down until you meet the tower. And that's all we're going to do for that step. You can certainly make any little adjustments. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can put your pencil away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the base coat for our tower and the city that's off in the distance. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my light lavender that we created, purple, brown, black, and white. What I'm actually going to be doing is making a darker version of this lavender. So I have pre-mixed my color and we'll be using that as the base coat for the tower and the city. I've pre-mixed my color, which is right in through here. How I got to that was I used some of my leftover background color. I added a little bit of purple and a little bit of black and a little bit of brown. So I'm in essence just taking it and making it a darker version by using the same colors that I used in the first go around. And if you didn't have any of this left, then you can certainly just create this color by using purple, brown, black, and white. So again, it's a very gray type of color, but it has a little bit of a purplish or a lavender type of a hue to it. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to color my whole tower with it. I'm going to clean up any lines that I think I can clean up. I'm not terribly concerned about making it with perfect edges because I know that it's going to, I'm going to have a lot of snow uh, coming down from the sky. So as I'm going through this process, I can certainly slow down and get my edges to be clean. However, it's off in the distance. It's got a, a snowstorm in front of it and you could get away with your edges being almost foggy looking. So I wouldn't stress over the edges being perfect. You can even see I had some, I didn't have um, all the paint mixed out of my bristles. So when I first started the process, I had a little bit of um, extra brown in this area, which I'm all right with. Because again, I know 
how much more work is going to be happening to this. And I also know I'm going to have a lot of out of focus type of um, appearance to it, which is why we're really just using such a um, soft kind of um, muted type of a color to work as our base coat of this beautiful structure that's, um, you know, as it is a metal structure, so it of course would have some reflective qualities to it, but again, it, I'm intending this to be a nice wintry day that's got lots of atmospheric dimension in it, so I'm just gonna go for a nice subtle type of a color in through here. You could have fun and make this more well, that was a little bit aggressive. <laughs> I, I painted outside my lines a little bit too much there. Um, you could certainly have fun with this. You could make it a real vibrant purple, or maybe you want to make your Eiffel Tower red or green or whatever color you want. It's art. You get to make all of the creative decisions on your own. That's the beautiful part about making art is you're in the driver's seat as the artist, and you get to make anything you want. If it's not exactly as it is in real life, then that is just you cashing in your own artistic creative license to make it into whatever you want. And again, not terribly concerned about these edges being perfect, but I am opting to use this bright brush because it has shorter bristles on it and it tends to give me, when I'm doing these long um, lo linear type of paintings, it, I have a, a pretty good success with getting nice clean edges with these type of brushes. So you can certainly use any brush that you want, but when I'm doing these type of um, longer continuous lines where I feel like I, I may want a pretty clean edge to it, these brushes are great because they have the, the, the because the bristles are nice and short, they can't, they don't over bend on you. And then I'm just going to finish cleaning this up at the bottom or finish coloring in this section and then we're going to do a very loose impressionistic style or out of focus type of um, city off in the distance which again you can use your own interpretive ways. The city I'm creating is just a very very loose interpretation of the the city below this beautiful um, this beautiful Eiffel Tower and I am definitely not going for any specific buildings or anything like that. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to come down in through here. I'm using my the same color and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of loosely go across the bottom in through here right to my pencil mark and then I'm just going to arbitrarily kind of pull up some shapes. So more rectangles. Again, think of this as out of focus type of um, structure. We're going to put highlights and shadows in a little while in this city. So it'll have a little bit more dimension to it. You could certainly pull out your smaller brush to accomplish this if you wanted to. But again, I am just going for a bunch of kind of um, squares and rectangles and a couple of pieces that pop up in various heights and just a soft illusion of a city off in the distance. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our city and our Eiffel Tower. I'm gonna to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my dark lavender, white, and black. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. What I'm really looking to do here is just give a really simple illusion of the details for the tower and for the city. Again, out of focus, don't need to do a lot here. Just gonna give some quick gestural marks in order to give um, these things a little bit more dimension. I'm gonna start with the city so I can get myself warmed up. What I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna pick up my uh, darker lavender plus a teeny tiny bit of black paint. So I have a little bit of my lavender and a teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush at the same time. And really what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of put in a couple of additional marks within my city. I feel like that's too much black on my brush, so I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. And I really just kind of go 
gave a couple of vertical, a couple of horizontal, and just bring myself through that city, adding a couple of little shadows. Maybe there's a shadow on the side of that building. Maybe there's a little shadow in through there, but nothing really substantial, just something to give a little bit of dimension. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my um, light. I don't think I said I was gonna use my, no, actually I'm gonna still use that um, dark lavender plus white on my brush. So I have the dark lavender plus a little white on my brush. And this will give me little highlights throughout the city. You could certainly use a bit of um, your light lavender, but you might run the risk of losing it in front of um, in front of the background. So just if you use the dark lavender plus white, it'll give you a little bit more diversity in your in your colors and you won't necessarily run as close of a risk or as much of a risk of, of losing it. And again, we're just looking for out of focus type of information. So that's looking pretty good to me. That's about as far as I wanna take that. So now I'm gonna move on to my tower. I'm gonna do a couple of, of strategic marks first and then I'll build it off of that. So I'm gonna pick up my dark lavender plus a teeny tiny bit of black paint. Again, an itty bitty bit. I don't need much at all. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, give myself little markers on this midsection in through here. So I'm gonna come about halfway down and I'm gonna give myself a little marker and I'm gonna, I'm just making myself a little kind of bump out in through here. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the side about halfway down, a little bump out. I'm gonna connect these two. Again, I've got my dark lavender plus a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of go straight across in through here, give myself this um, kind of shadowy area that's gonna represent part of the um, structure. I'm gonna pick up more of my black and my dark lavender, and I'm gonna color this whole section in here with a real loose kind of left to right uh, brush stroke. Again, I, I'm really just at this point for this section looking for it to go a little bit darker. I'm coming down to where it where this vertical line meets the leg of the um, structure, so somewhere in through here. And again, just giving myself a left to right. So this is going to be a loose uh, brush stroke, kind of sketchily in nature, which is going to give me a couple of different tones in it, which is why I'm using both of those colors on my brush at the same time, not going too, too dark. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the same thing uh, with the same color combination in a little section here. So I'm gonna use black plus my dark color. I'm gonna come up, I would say, um, I would say about a third of the way between here and here. So maybe somewhere in this vicinity, give myself kind of the outline in through here, trying to stay about the same distance away from this inner, um, from the inner edge, just kind of going like this and if you go too dark like i feel like that was just a, a bit too dark and that's going to pick up my base color for my for my structure so this is going to be my dark um lavender and just paint right over it that's going to dull it down i want it to be darker anyways so i'm just allowing for that darkness to happen and then i'm just kind of bringing this over in this vicinity bringing this all the way down over here so i have this little dark under um, underneath part to, to the tower. So that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of this darkness up top as well. So my dark lavender plus a tiny bit of, um, of black, not much at all. I'm gonna start right in through here and just maybe bring a little bit up in this direction. So just a little bit darker right up where this line meets up and through here, something like this. And again, not much, just a little tiny bit. Do the same thing over and through here. You could even add a tiny bit of water to your brush if you wanted the, the paint to spread a little bit thinner. So that's looking pretty good for, for those things. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going to add um, a bit of the background light lavender. So I've got light lavender on my brush. This is gonna be strategic to add a couple of little um, peekaboo spots in this lookout thing. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna give myself a couple of almost like square type of shapes in through here. I'm also gonna take this and outline the top of this so it comes across 
outlines the top of that in through there. I'm going to put some, uh, w without even washing my brush, I'm just going to kind of give myself some downward type of quick longer strokes in this section in through here. This is just going to give the implication of maybe some of the bars and braces up in through here. Again, nothing to, I'm just letting myself kind of run out of paint right now. I'm going to also use this color to give myself um, some structure above above here. So I'm going to come up maybe about, I would say, halfway between here and here, somewhere in through here, and I'm going to just bring this loosely down in this direction. And you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to get really <laughs> loose with, with my um, painting of details. I'm really right now just kind, trying to give some uh, believable details in here. And then in a minute, we're going to get carefree with um, the rest of the information. And then I'm going to give a horizontal line at the top of this arc. So something in through here is going to give me a horizontal line. And again, I hardly have any paint on my brush right now. I'm just kind of using the remnants in order to give the illusion of these particular spots. I'm also going to give this same line on top of this dark section right here. So just that light lavender is going to give me a light line on top of this area over here. And I'm actually bracing myself on my canvas with my um, with the palm of my hand so I can kind of keep it on the straighter side with a little bit of um, firm brush stroke. I'm going to use this light color down this side in through here, not all the way to the edge, but almost something like that and like that. I'm also going to put this down this left side in through here. So I'm really just giving some long sketcherly um, type of brush strokes. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some more lightness, but I want to do one more pass with some dark stuff. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put my dark lavender plus a tiny bit of black back on my brush again. And I'm going to do some real fun just um, elements that are going to give the implication of all the ironwork on, on the building or on the structure. So I've got my dark um, lavender plus a touch of black. And I'm going to just kind of, I think I need a little bit more black on my brush so we can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to do just a couple of these marks in through here. So again, this is the dark lavender plus a teeny tiny touch of black. And if you need to keep adding black like I do so you can see it. But again, I'm not doing much. I don't want there to be too much detail on here. I want it to look out of focus. I'm also going to do some... Um, some little vertical ones in through here. And whatever you do on one side, just try and do it the other. Mine is definitely not 100% accurate with the, um, with the real detail that is on the building, but you could certainly look yours up, look up all of the exact detail. I'm just really trying to give a nice loose representation so I can have, you know, something that resembles the tower. So now that I've got that, I'm going to do a whole bunch of kind of crisscross type of marks in through here. Again, I've got my dark lavender plus a tiny touch of black. When I say tiny, I mean teeny tiny touch of black. I think that was going to be a little bit too much, so I added a little bit more of the color. There we go. And then I'm going to do a little, little bits in through here, just kind of diagonal, kind of crisscrossy type of marks. I'm going to do the same thing up and through here. And because I'm using both colors on my brush at the same time, I'm just providing these really faint um, illusion of these uh, of these type of iron work throughout it. And now that I've got that, I'm going to uh, pick back up the light lavender on my dirty brush and do the same thing, but on top of this. So I've got maybe just little bits in through here. And again, this is just really quick gestural type of marks to give myself and give my painting a little bit of extra oomph. This is not going to be the the um, necessary focal point of the painting, but it will definitely add to the illusion if you can get some of these um, some of these elements in here. I say it's not the focal point; it is the Eiffel Tower, so it should should have some some focus on it. But I, we're letting it be out of focus in the background, so that's. Um, that's creating a really unique 
uh, perspective on it. And then again, just some more crisscrosses. They don't even have to be exactly on the last ones. I'm just kind of having fun with allowing my brush to do whatever it wants with these little crisscrosses. And then you can fiddle with it all you want. You can clean up edges if you want to. Um, we're going to be using our, we're going to use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the ground and we're going to put the base coat on the foreground trees. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are white. I'll use my dark lavender, black, and green. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to do my ground first and then we'll put our trees on. I'm going to start with white paint on my brush and I'm going to, I'm going to have my, my trees that are going to be in the foreground are going to cover the bottom of my tower in through here and in through here. So when I do this, I only need to kind of take up this amount of space in through here and I want it to be lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. So I'm going to start with white at the top and then as I work my way down towards the bottom, I'll pick up a little bit of my dark lavender. So I've got my white up in through here and I want this land to look like it's way closer than the city because this is where my person is going to be walking. So I'm starting up at the top so it's the brightest up at the top and I don't need a super straight line going across so that's why I'm kind of allowing it to have a little bit of movement and look a little you know ripply as if there's little piles of snow and then I'm just going to kind of let myself run out of paint. I'm just going left to right allowing for this kind of soft transition into that lavender type of a color. I don't want to just stop right here either just in case the branches on my trees um, kind of have little peekaboo spots so I'll make sure that it kind of just loosely blends out a little bit but I don't need to do much and then I want it to go a little bit darker down at the bottom so I'm going to pick up a teeny bit of my dark lavender color just with my dirty brush just to get it to go a little bit darker down where my person is going to be walking and then once I've got that done I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put my trees in place. So I'm thinking that these are just some beautiful evergreen trees that have been, you know, covered by this fresh snowstorm. So I'm going to be using black and green to create them. And I'm going to be using a dotting or a stippling technique. My tr This tree, we're going to see a lot of it's going to come up to the top of my canvas. And then this one, we're just going to have kind of maybe the bottom edges of it. I'm going to start with my big tree over here. I'm going to start with a little bit of black and green paint on my brush. I will eventually just kind of alternate back and forth between the two colors, but I'm going to start with both of them just so I can kind of get a good idea of where I want my tree to go. So I'm going to have it really kind of tall and even just kind of going right up to the top of my canvas. I'm going to have some branches kind of just popping out, coming along in through here. I definitely want the, it to look like it's wider and broader as it's coming down my canvas. So I'm going to allow for these branches to just kind of um, make their way over to the right. But I want this left hand side to be really kind of filled in. I, I said I meant left. I might have said right there for a second. But you can have these fun branches just kind of sticking out every now and again. Like maybe I'll have this one kind of coming up in this direction. Maybe we've got a couple branches coming out over in that direction. These uh, evergreen trees, they can have branches kind of coming down. They can have like little clusters, almost like little finger type of <laughs> parts of the the um, tree kind of coming out like this. So have fun with it. Yours doesn't have to be in a, the same exact formation as mine. At this point, I'm just kind of alternating my, my black and my green so I can have various um, tones throughout the tree. I'm going to have this one kind of, I want definitely to have this one make sure I cover any unpainted spots in through there. So that's a pretty good one like that. And then maybe we've got a little bit more of the greenery in through here. I'm going to call it just kind of dot this in back here because this is going to be all covered with snow anyways. And then I think down in through here, 
I'm going to have a good one kind of coming maybe a little bit farther out than that one, and then maybe just one down in through here. And of course, again, yours can be any formation that you want it to be. Yours can be a, a different type of tree. Maybe you want yours to be kind of a, uh, a bush of sorts, whatever works for you. And just know we're going to have lots of other things snow on top of it so again if you've got little peekaboo spots going on right now don't worry about it just leave it as is i'm going to come over onto the right hand side i'm going to have this one this kind of eyeball and where i want definitely going to have this kind of coming up in through here i'm going to have maybe a little piece kind of leaning over into my uh, cityscape maybe we'll have a little bit like this and maybe a little bit like this <laughs> of course making it cover some my spots that I that I need it to cover which is the bottom of my my um, tower and then maybe we'll have a nice fun one coming up over in through here and then maybe another one kind of coming like this and again I'm thinking I'm gonna have my person somewhere in through here so I'm mindful of where I want my person to be so I'm trying not to overdo it I'm also going to have decorations on these so I don't need them to be um, perfect either so once I've got that done I'm going to be using my pencil for the next step so once you've got this done you can put your large brush away take out your pencil and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our woman. I'm gonna be using my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm just gonna use my pencil today for ease of erasing, I guess, if I need to. So I'm gonna have my woman standing in this area in through here. You could certainly do a different gender. You could do a couple of different people if you wanted to. I'm just gonna have a simple woman standing walking in in this area over here so i'm going to put my umbrella on first and then i'll build her body up after that i'm going to have mine a little bit to the right of the center of my tower so if this is about the center of my tower i'm going to go maybe an inch inch and a half to the right and the top of my umbrella is about halfway between my ground and the arc in through here. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a marker in through there. And then I'm going to have the bottom of my umbrella almost at my, well, maybe about an inch, half of an inch to an inch away from my horizon line in through here, my ground. So somewhere in through here. So I want this umbrella to look like it is kind of tipped. So I want to have where the spokes start is going to be near the top. So I'm going to put a little dot in through there. Then what I can do is I'm going to, you could do a couple of different things. You could either kind of make yourself an oval and then um, connect all of the spokes to the oval. But I think for me, it's going to be a little bit easier if I do my spokes first and then I'll connect all those. So I'm going to start from here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of give myself a couple of long type of um, spokes down at the bottom. This one almost comes straight down to where I have this marker in through here. And then I'm going to give this one a little bit of a curve over in through here. As I move up towards the top, my spokes are going to get shorter and shorter. So these three will be the longest. And then from here, I'm going to kind of curve this out like this. I'll do a similar one on the other side, but it, maybe it's not quite as long. I've got from here, I'm going to do one in through here like this. I got one more up in through here, and then I have one more up in through here. I stop these a little bit shy, of, or about the same height as my the top that I wanted. So now I can just kind of connect these ones up in through here. As I come around, I'm gonna actually see a dip between um, each one of these spokes to create the profile or the edge of my umbrella. So from here to here, this one's kind of uh, still a little rounded this one's still a little rounded but once I start getting in this direct this one in through here I start to dip it in just a little bit so I'll do the same thing on the other side dip it in just a little bit and then these three are pretty severe so I'm going to dip this in like this I'm going to dip this in like this and then I'll dip this in just a little bit like this I'm using pencil also because I'm going to do a base coat with red paint and I know my pencil will show through my red paint so um, 
that's another benefit to using pencil on this step. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do her body. So I'm going to have her, her coat is going to come directly down from uh, here and it's going to stop maybe about an inch away from the bottom of my canvas. I'm going to give myself just a little kind of edge to the bottom of her skirt, something like that, that's maybe about, I don't know, an inch and a half wide. I'm going to um, create her torso, which is going to come in through here and in through here. Just bring it in a little bit around that waist, and then I just bump it out just a little bit. Give the bottom of the skirt a little bit of movement, kick it out like that. This is going to have a little bit of her hip maybe, and then just kind of bring it down towards the bottom. I'm going to give her a couple of elbows, so I'm just going to bring a little elbow in through here. Our elbows are usually around where our waist is, so something like that. Maybe this one comes out over a little bit further out like that. And then I'm just gonna give her a couple of legs. <laughs> so I'm gonna come down here uh, in the center of where her body is. I'm gonna give a little diagonal line from here down to the bottom of my canvas. Same thing here, a little diagonal line like that. I'm going to move my canvas so I can reach it a little better like that. Then I'm going to go to the right, give myself another uh, little line. I'm going to bring it in like at her ankle and then maybe kick it out a little bit. Do the same thing over here. Kind of bring it in at her ankle, kick it out a little bit. Make sure those boots are on. And I'm going to put a little kind of uh, top to her boots in through here. So this will be maybe a little fluffy part up at the top of her boots. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline, you can certainly adjust yours as much as you want. We're going to use our small brush for the next step so you can put your pencil away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint our umbrella person. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using red, black, and white. I don't think I'm going to use any other colors. If I do, I'll let you know. I'm going to start by painting a base coat on my umbrella with red paint. And you could, of course, use any color that you want. You know, again, you could have a purple umbrella or a green umbrella, whatever color is speaking to you is totally fine. I'm just doing a nice thin layer in through here, bringing it all the way to my pencil, and you'll be able to see how my, pen how my pencil shows through my paint. Uh, because of the type of paint that I use, which is a student grade paint that tends to have a lot of transparency to it, but red typically is one of the colors that inherently has a lot of transparency to it. So when I'm doing something like this, if I do want to have some guidelines underneath, I can certainly use a pencil or some kind of darker colored paint in order to provide me with those guidelines underneath. And for me, I'm, I'm using it for the spokes on my umbrella. And then I'm going to have her wearing the same, she's going to be wearing some red boots as well. So once I've got this in here, I'm going to paint her boots red. But I am going to make sure that this paint isn't too thick because I want it to dry kind of on the faster side. So I'm just picking off some of the thicker spots so when I um, so it dries quick enough for me to come back and do what I want to do on my second coat to it. So that's looking pretty good. So I don't need it to be fully 100% painted, but a nice good coat works. Now I'm going to just use this red. I'm going to just move this so I can again get to the bottom of my canvas here. I'm going to, uh, she's got some red boots on, so I'm going up to this little fluffy cuff part that we put so maybe she's got some nice warm I don't know I don't know fluffy boots <laughs> with with some good snow protection on them so her feet stay nice and warm so once I've got her her boots on here I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush because she's going to be wearing a black garment of sorts so I'm washing dry my brush and I'm going to be painting her jacket with just black paint Again, use whatever color is comfortable for you. If I'm going to use black as my base coat, and then I'm going to put little highlights in order to show the movement of her um, dress, as well as perhaps the, um, the shape or form of her body. But this is such a small silhouette 
that we're doing that you really don't need to go too far with the details. I think it's just more important to have a good shape or a believable shape when you're doing these smaller um, these smaller objects of sorts. So even if you don't get tons of detail, but you get a good shape, like it's a believable waistline or a believable length for her elbows. If you know, it's a believable size foot. As long as you get that kind of believable proportionate shape to it, the the details don't have to be in numerous. You don't have to put a, a hundred little details to it. You can just get away with minimal detail to sell your story. I'm going to just kind of kick out her 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 jacket here as if maybe the the wintry wind is taking it a little bit and again just kind of thinning out my paint so it's not so it doesn't take too too long to dry I'm going to also have her wearing black leggings or black stockings or something black on her legs so I'm just bringing this right down into her her boots and as you're getting towards these little tiny pieces in through here you can certainly either use a smaller brush or what I just did was I added a tiny bit of water to my br to my bristles and what that does is it helps me to get um, until it, to kind of have the paint sink into these little tiny crevices of the canvas it almost makes it like an ink consistency so it goes right into the crevices and gives me a nice clean edge so now that I've got that done, I'm just going to do some little tiny details on the um, on the umbrella. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to put a little tiny shadow on these back ones, kind of where they dip in, and then we'll put a little highlight on the top. So I'm going to pick up red and just a teeny tiny dot of black paint on the tip of my brush, and this is going to give me just a little dark area on this back side of the um, of the umbrella where it kind of dips in uh, on the on the back side as if it's being shadowed by the atmosphere of sorts and also showing the contour on the shape of the umbrella so I'm just putting a little bit of shadow back in through here maybe a little bit over on this one over here and it, it, the black can easily take over so as you're doing this just I would caution you to not use a ton of black on your brush and if your paint is too wet and it's not working out for you just give it a minute let it dry and you can always come back um, and add more details on top of it. I'm putting a little tiny black dot up here where the top part of the umbrella is going to go and then I'm going to just um, wipe my brush off, pick up more red paint, make sure that I have a good coverage here. I had a little bit of black left on my brush which is great as I'm working my way away from this dark area in through here so I just keep picking up red in order to make sure I have good coverage. I will um, put a little bit of information on these spokes in a minute, but right now just kind of getting myself um, final, get a nice coat on here. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up red plus a tiny bit of white on my brush. So again, just an itty bitty bit of white paint on my brush to lighten up a couple of these top panels of the umbrella. So red plus a little bit of white I don't necessarily want it to go all the way white because I'm going to have some snow on there in a, in a little bit, but this is helping me to sell the story that this is the top of the umbrella. And again, if your red paint underneath is still wet, that's all right. Just work it on in. I, I'm getting the parts that kind of pop out the most on the umbrella. I'm getting those to be the lightest. So this little area kind of around here um, that would kind of bump out the most. That's where I would put the lighter areas. And you can even take this red and white and kind of uh, streak it down those those spokes a little bit, especially on this kind of um, top side of it. That's going to give them um, almost like a 3D type of look to them. But again, just minimal kind of detail. This is looking pretty good in through here. I'm noticing my hand just went through some wet paint, so I'll have to take care of that in a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. And anything that goes wrong, you can always hide with snow. So just know that that's always a possibility and a, a good place to, 
to run to if you need to later. So now that I've got that, I'm just gonna finish up her, her boots and her garment. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do her boots first. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, red and black down at the bottom just to make it look like this is just kind of the little shadowed area, maybe a little bit underneath this little cuff. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put red paint on to uh, get this to kind of just blend up a little bit in through there. I just didn't want these to be as red as the top of her um, hat, so or her umbrella, so that's why I kind of dulled it down with a little bit of, of black paint. And then you could certainly um, put, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white now just to give myself a little tiny bit of maybe snow or a little highlight at the tippy top of them. There we go, that looks pretty cute. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush um, first, I'm going to get rid of this little boo-boo here <laughs> with a little bit of white paint on my brush. Just a little dot in those little speckles <laughs> into there. Of course, I could have gotten rid of that with snow later on, but it was going to drive me crazy. So uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little highlight on her arm and the side of her. So I see that the black paint is still a little wet. So I just put white paint on my brush and I'm just going to put a little highlight down the side of her arm in through here, which is mixing with my wet black paint. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side of her body in through here. So I'm doing this for a couple of different reasons. One, I wanna give her body a little bit of shape. So this gray in the area of her, um, of her backside here will help to give her a little bit of shape. I don't need to do much. I just wanna put a little bit of gray in through there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit down at the bottom as well of the skirt. So it gives it a little bit or of the jacket. So it gives it a little bit of movement. So while she's walking, the, um, the bottom of her jacket seems to be uh, taking on a little bit of movement from her body moving. And then we're gonna be using, once you got this done, we're gonna use our the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you want, then you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the ornaments in the trees. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are red, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first put them in place and then we'll just come back and put little highlights and shadows on them. I'm gonna start with just red paint. You can really have as many of these as you want. I'm gonna just kind of have them throughout my um, my trees. My trees are closer to us than the person, so these pers in perspectively can be, or proportionately can be larger than the woman herself. So don't be afraid to put some big ones or some small ones, whatever size works for you. I'm gonna scoot some in between some of these branches. I'm gonna put some, you know, next to each other. Again, my paint is gonna be transparent. So I'm going to allow for the transparency to, to happen. And when I come back, on a second pass, I'll get them to do more of what I want them to. So that's gonna be good on that side. This side over here, I think I'm gonna have a nice bright one kind of hanging. I'll just put this one somewhere in through here. Maybe this one's gonna have some good size to it. And again, don't worry about the transparency. One, we've got lots of snow that we're gonna be putting on top of these. And in a second, I'm gonna put some, um, some fun, quick details on them as well. I think I'm gonna have some, maybe three or four over in through here. You have one like that. Maybe we'll have one that's gonna be smaller. Well, maybe not that small. Maybe one won't be bigger, kind of coming off the side of the canvas. And uh, you can have them going in front of each other. You could even, of course, do Christmas lights instead of these just simple circular ornaments that I'm doing. So as you're going through your process, if you want to change up your decorations, I just thought it would be neat to uh, have it match her umbrella. <laughs> but you could, of course, do anything that you wanted to. You're going to have a little one kind of hanging underneath here. And then maybe we'll have one up in this tree again, just to kind of draw the eye throughout the, throughout the painting. I got one kind of snuck up in this little 
tippy top of the tree up and through here. So once I've got them placed where I want, again, I'm gonna have snow and stuff on top of them, but I'm gonna give them a little bit of um, a shadow and a highlight. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of red and a tiny bit of black on my brush. So just a teeny tiny bit. I don't need much. I'm really just looking to um, maybe give them a, a second coat if I need a little shadow on some of them, if I want them to have maybe a little black reflection of sorts, I can certainly just put a little kind of line in it to, to show maybe it's reflecting some something that's ne nearing it, or perhaps I use the black and the red to cover or disguise areas that I can't, that I don't want to see through. And then I just pick up a little bit of red in order to finalize the, the color that I want on that particular ornament, and I'll come back in a second with a little bit of a highlight. So that's good on those ones. I'm gonna come back over here with a little bit of red and black. I think this one over here, I'm gonna put um, a little kind of shadowy side to it over on this left-hand side, and then I'm gonna pick up more red just to give myself a good coat on in through here. And the beautiful thing about red is the more layers you put, the more vibrant it's going to look. So as I go through this process, I might, you know, not put too much of the shadow aspect in it. Maybe it may, you know, maybe one of these is tucked underneath and might have some good shadow to it, but I'm really just kind of um, wanting this to be a nice rich tone for the red. So I don't need to do build it too bright but the beautiful thing about red is the more layers you put on it the especially when it's on a dark surface like this the more vibrant that red is going to become and the more true that color will become maybe this little guy in here doesn't need a little shadow maybe we're just going to make him nice and and bright and then this one up here again just so i'm just switching back and forth between red and black at this point while i'm getting this layer on here and then, so that was black and red, and I'm just picking up some red to get my second coat on here. And then I'm just gonna fly through with a little highlight. So my highlight is gonna be red and white on my brush at the same time. So I can just find little pockets that are kind of peeking through and just put some little twinkle on that ornament. Again, don't need to do much. I, you know, I, I maybe want them to to sparkle a little bit and to have a little bit of a shine, but I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot. And then I'll do the same thing for these little guys over here. And I don't necessarily want to look like snow, so that's why I'm using the red and white at the same time to give me just a little little tiny sparkle within that, um, that ornament. So it looks like it's just shiny. And then we're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your, your ornaments on here, just fiddle with them as much as you want, and then you can put this small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put snow on the trees. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my small brush to show you how to mix two more custom colors. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna give a nice kind of deep, dark snow type of color on the kind of interior sides of the tree and then we'll put a little bit brighter snow on the top. So I'm going in for one more shade of lavender. <laughs> this is it right here. So this is the same color combination as these two previous colors. So we used black, brown, purple, and this time a very little bit of white. So it's just a darker version of the other two colors that we created. This definitely needs more purple in it and probably more white. Um, and I'm using this as my, as my shadowed snow color. So it complements the painting really well and we've got a nice harmony throughout the colors throughout the, the entire painting. So that's gonna be my dark snow color. As I get towards the edge of my, of my trees, I want to have some light snow at the top. But I want it to not compete with all these really cool colors in through here. So I'm going to give it a, 
almost white color, but not so white because we still have the snow in the sky. So I want that to have its own white color as well. So here's my light snow color for my trees. How I got to this was I used mostly white with, believe it or not, a tiny touch of red, a little touch of red, and a little touch of brown. So I'm in essence kind of making this really light, light tan color with a little tiny bit of a pinkish hue to it. This is going to, when you, when you put it on the canvas next to everything else, it's not gonna look like it's pink, but it, it will look like it's a nice illuminated type of colored snow that again, will set itself apart from the white, white snow that we're gonna put in the sky in a minute. This gets, this kind of gives you that um, progression to the bright white snow. So those are the two colors. Now I'm going to take my large brush and I'm gonna put my, my shadowed snow on first. So I'm picking up my large brush. I'm gonna have a lot of shadowed snow over on the sides of the tree, even on, even on the edges of the tree, but I'll, I will, um, make it fluffier with the other color that I have. So I'm not going to cover up every branch that I have. I'm going to put some of this on top of my um, my ornaments. I'm going to put some on top of here. I'm going to put little bits back in through here. And if you feel like it's not dark enough, you can always pick up, I just picked up a touch of black. So as I'm on this back side, if I want it to go a little darker, I can certainly bring in a little bit more black to it. You could always pick up more gray. You could really kind of, or one of your lighter tones, you could really have fun with uh, changing little values in it like that. The key is to just not overdo it. You don't have to paint the whole thing 100%, just kind of put it in as if there's little branches that there's snow just resting on. And you don't have to put it on exactly every single branch that you already have. You can even create new branches. If you feel that you wanted something extra special to come out a little bit further, then put some snow on it <laughs> and it'll look like the snow is just kind of covering that branch. So that's looking pretty good over here. I'm gonna go and do the same thing on the right hand side, bringing a little bit on top of my uh, ornaments so they looks like they have a little bit of snow on them bringing some in through here and again I'm just thinking if you know if I was snow where would I sit I'm you know just kind of hanging on to these these branches some are kind of leaning over some are popping up so feel free to kind of put it on the edges where you where you see fit and then once I've got that on there I'm gonna without washing my brush I'm picking up a little bit of my lighter tone that we just created, that light snow color. And I'm gonna put some on these edges. And you'll be able to see as, as, you, as you start to do this, how it's gonna stand out from that lavender color that we put as our sky color earlier. And I'm putting a lot of it on this right-hand side. I'll pull a little bit back um, towards the left-hand side, but I'm thinking that it's gonna be sitting more on the tippy tops of these branches and more towards the you know the outer front side of it but of course you can you can fiddle with that as much as you want this is looking pretty good and then of course we've got snow in the sky coming later too so anything that happens unexpectedly you'll be able to counteract with fun snow flying from the sky so something like this just kind of getting it to kind of hang on the top of some of these um, branches that are just kind of leaning over here. I'm really digging this color. I think I'm actually gonna put a little bit of this. I'm gonna pull out my medium brush for a second here because I'm digging my color here. So I'm gonna pull out my medium brush. I think I want a little bit of this uh, light snow on my tower. So I just pulled out my medium brush. I'm just gonna kind of streak it up at the top of this tower in maybe like resting little piles up on these edges. Yeah, see it's these little touches that when you find a color that is working and you feel like it's adding a good amount of information to the painting or it's just tickling your fancy, add it elsewhere. Like I thought that it looked really cool over here so I'm just gonna put it a little bit in my, in my tower where I kind of feel I want to, <laughs> just to add that little extra something something special onto it. 
there. And that's all I wanted to do. Nothing much, maybe a little bit here. <laughs> and then once you've got this done, fiddle with it all you want. And then we're gonna use our large brush, maybe maybe a couple of little spots on her, on her umbrella too. We're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large and your medium brush away, <laughs> take out your, or wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to snow making. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna paint snow in the sky now. I'm gonna use my large brush. The color I'm gonna use is white. So I reserved myself from using white. The only time I used it was down here. So this way, when I put the white on, it's gonna, it's gonna pop and really look like a good snowfall. I'm gonna start really heavy at the top of my canvas with a dotting technique. I'm gonna let myself run out of paint as I come down the canvas. So what'll happen is it'll look nice and soft as it comes down and it'll look like there's a million little pieces and, and then it'll just look like a snowstorm. <laughs> so I've got a good amount of paint on my brush. I'm gonna start at the top. Every time I reload, I'll probably start up at the top just to ensure that I don't have too big of like big splotches of white chunky snow throughout the rest of the painting. I just really want it to be the brightest at the top or the whitest at the top. And then I'm gonna start dotting myself down the canvas. So if you feel as you're dotting this that you've got so much paint on your brush that when you go to pass over your tower, if you feel like you're gonna cover it 100%, then just take your brush and wipe it off on your paper towel. So this way you'll have you'll be able to see the tower behind it because there's no sense in us putting the tower in if you can't see it. But as I'm running out of paint, that's when I start to move down. I am using this dotting or stippling technique where I'm going straight into the canvas. And I because it has so many little bristles on the end of it, it's making the it look really soft and like there's a million little pieces of snow falling in front of the tower and the snow falls everywhere. So as you're doing this, don't avoid certain things like you're gonna put snow in front of these bushes too. But I start up at the top, I'm nearly out of paint right now, so I'm gonna reload with more white paint, kind of tap it off on my paper towel, start at the top. And I also don't, as I, if I'm, I'm, if I'm nervous that I've got too much paint on my brush, I want to come down my canvas. But again, I don't want to have a lot of paint on my brush. I lightly touch my canvas, so I will hardly touch it at all, and that will allow me to be, you know, to have more of a, a lighter touch to it. So if there was too much paint on my brush, that's okay because I've got, I'm using a lighter touch. Now I'm starting to run out of paint. I can feel it. So I can start crossing over my, my building and making it look like there's a million little pieces. And again, I just keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel. So that way I, you know, I ensure that I'm not using too, too much. And I, I have a good amount of paint on my brush to keep going in front of my tower right now. So I'm just gonna kind of keep going while I feel comfortable doing it this way. Um, if you've got the right quantity of paint to go over an area such as this, then just stay there for a little while. You can always go back into the sky where it's it's safer to make mistakes in the sky than it is on something as important to your composition as this. So I've got the right quantity of paint on my brush. I'm feeling really confident, confident with going over it. Same thing with her. I have a perfect quantity of paint on my brush right now to go in front of her. So I'm going to do it. I feel confident. So I'm just going to kind of take it and just sprinkle that snow right in front of her. And that made, that made me feel comfortable. So now I'm going to pick up more white paint and make sure that I've got it over the rest of my canvas. So again, I'm safe in the sky. So I've got, I just reloaded my brush and I can start just kind of tapping it in through here. You don't want it to look like a bunch of polka dots. So that's why, you know, the less paint I have on my brush, the more I can kind of overlap the overlap it onto each other and it makes it look more like a thousand little speckles as opposed to um, you know one brush push 
and I just kind of keep doing it that way. There's a lot of different ways to make snow. Um, I'm actually, I might actually take out my small brush to put little um, more visible pieces in front of here, but right now I'm just kind of going with, with this right now, I just reloaded my brush a little bit so I can get a little bit of this softness in front of uh, my, my trees over here as well because if it snows in front of the tower it's going to snow in front of these trees too so just a little bit of that texture all over the place is going to make it look the most natural and I think I am I'm going to pull out my small brush because I want a couple of really bright pieces of snow to maybe look like they're closer to us so I just put I put my large brush away take out my small brush and you can take and just make these a couple of really you know more vibrant pieces on top of that um, soft snow that you just did. And this is gonna give you more uh, dimension in it because you're gonna have that soft stuff that looks like it's far away. And then you've got these closer pieces that look like, you know, they're as close to you as these as these bushes or these trees. So you can certainly have fun with different brushes creating different um, types of snow depending on how far away you want them to be but again don't forget to put these pieces in front of your tower in front of oh that's a lot on my brush don't do that <laughs> those would have been really big snowflakes uh, you know so put little ones in front maybe she's got a little pile up on her on her umbrella so I'm going to put a little extra bit right on her umbrella and then I would definitely step back from mine i'd probably let it dry for a couple minutes see if there's any additional um you know bits of snowflakes that i want to put or any little changes and then we have one last little step to go and it's going to be with this small brush so once you've got this done you can wash if you can ever stop making snowflakes you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom, or the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left with this one. I'm gonna use my dark snow color. So that was the color that we used over here, that dark lavender color. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol Whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful winter in Paris painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.